Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyle Welch. I am the market director for EV uh, here at Preferred Credit. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, uh, this is our EV demo for the Market Awareness Month. And as we uh, typically remind everyone as to why we do Market Awareness Month, I'll, I'll remind all of you, um, it's really to uh, relate knowledge from our staff here to our consumers. Uh, the more knowledgeable and the more we understand the various products that we do finance here for credit, uh, the more the customers trust us. And the more the customers trust us, uh, the better they perform, the better service we can provide to them, and the better service we can provide to our clients like them. Um, whether you are a customer service agent that needs to work with a customer that may be even past due, or if you're verifying an account with the customer, the more you know about the products, the more uh, confidence that you can convey to the customers. And as we said, the more they trust us. Uh, even as simple as things like, you know what, if you're on the phone with the customer and you let them know that you saw a demo for an EV product, that will instantly build trust with that consumer and that is extremely valuable. Um, so with that, I want to once again welcome Matt. Uh, Mr. Matt White is joining us from Sioux Falls today. Uh, he is an EV distributor. Uh, he's been doing this for six months now. Yep. Uh, however, he's been a long-term partner of Preferred Credit, um, and we're thrilled and uh, very thankful to have him join us today. So I'm gonna turn this over to Matt. So once again, Mr. Matt White. Thank you. Perfect. Is that? That will work. That was, that was, that was perfect. Because of the, the, the cleaning chemicals or whatever, so what we incorporate is the essential oils in with the tools. So I'll show you how we do the floors. So we have a bigger brush. It's fancy. This is called the rectangle brush. <laughs> and this is the triangle brush. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can remember that. So I'll do the same thing. Pull the towel in here quick. And then what we do is the heat pad, we'll actually take whatever essential oils you want to use. And we'll put drops across the heat pad. And we've just started doing this, which I know they don't do in other offices because essential oils is so popular in our area that we wanted to incorporate more ways you can do this. And we found if people could get that fresh smell without the warning label, <laughs> All right, so we'll go right here. So, how does everybody usually clean their floors besides for vinegar and water? The Swiffer, the Swiffer, right? The wet jet stuff like that. Should have grabbed some of that stuff. But um, so this, yeah, we kick it on. Typically, we'll use it on a one or two. I don't know what kind of floor this is in here. If it's wood or tile, what made it look like wood? Nobody here knows. Is it tile? Yeah. So this, the steam is coming through the bottom. Take it. I'll let the heat go through. There we go. And then here I'll do this. You get like lemon smell. Go over here a little more. Smell the lemon. I know you like lemon, so I, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's how we can clean the floors. I suppose maybe the front row can smell the lemon. Everybody else probably can. Wow. So you can kind of see what we got off the floors. Just use a towel. So the cool thing is, no chemicals, and just like the window, what are we doing? We're actually pulling all that stuff off the floor. That's why we got to use a, a more absorbent towel as well. So what's cool, the dirty towel on the counter, is as you use these towels, uh, like at our house, you can actually use them. You have all that dirt we got off there, and then you can actually fold them the other way because the dirt doesn't get through the thick towels. So you're not just gonna use one side of the towel, you can use all four sides of the towel. So when you have a floor that's super dirty, like when we moved into our place, this is what we did. We went over all the floors, and then we put a, you know, flip the towel over. So then we can actually find out and see when we got all that layer of stuff off there. So you can 
see how well we did the first time we went over the floor. It's not too bad. Now when we're using just steam, it's going to dry. I mean, I guess we'll let it sit here for a few minutes. Usually it only takes a few minutes to completely dry as well. Okay. Now we have a 10 month old. And how many people, when they have their young little ones, what do we do when we put them on the carpet? Do you just put them on the floor or do we put the towel or the blanket out? The first kid, you usually put the yeah. blanket out. <laughs> the second one, you don't care anymore. And then the third, you just, they do whatever they want. So, okay. um, so we use our Kirby. We shampoo our floors a couple times a year. But this is what we use. I use this every two weeks. And we'll actually steam our carpets because we're using that hot steam. So we'll just go right over the carpet and do the same thing on the carpet. So I'm not necessarily doing it to get a deep clean. I'm doing it because I want to use that hot steam and really kind of kill the germs disinfect. So I just go nice and slow and you can actually turn it up to the highest setting. Now you're going to smell the lemon maybe. And, uh, and go over the carpet that way. So I can really steam the carpets good um, so we don't have to worry about it. Not too bad, you guys must use the Kirby machine. You just don't use the steam on the windows yet. Can you do it on sh like shake your, your carpet? Yes, okay. yep, yep. Our living room is a pretty thick carpet. So you just kind of go over it. it. It works really well on rugs too, because you sh some rugs are hard to shampoo. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so this is for any, any type of surface. Again, the three settings we use on there is for different floors. If we're a laminate, you know, two falls, we got a lot of the old farmhouses. So when we're doing these old farmhouses with laminate flooring that's been in there for 20 years, we're not going to use hot steam because that's usually a glue and all that. So we have to use a lot the EV1 setting, so it's a lot, um, uh, a lot less pressure on the floors. Do you guys would use some of that stuff at all? I don't know. Wait. Oh, yeah, I guess there's a lot of stuff on the carpet. I'm not going to put that up the cover. <laughs> all right. So the other thing that. Uh, people have the most difficulty cleaning is like the ovens and the stoves. Now you guys won't be able to see it much up here. I'll do just a part of it real quick. Uh, but when we do the ovens and the stoves, what do you guys usually use for the top of the stove? Because a lot of you guys have cooktops. That's kind of like most houses now. It seems like they're putting them in. Um, so on a cooktop, they, you know, in Sioux Falls, they pitch like the little razor blade things. Is that what people use here too? Or do you just use the chemical that you put on there and let it sit and then wipe it away? Um, a lot of the cupboards in Sioux Falls, they actually have little razor blades they use to scrape. Like if it boils over, it like sticks to that like crazy. So what we use is basically kind of like a plastic rubber brush. And then you can actually use a scrubbing pad with it. Um, what we found is when people clean ovens, a lot of times they'll use um, like a baking soda or they'll put something on there for like the abrasive part of it and what it does is it scratches the glass and the surface well if you have a scratch inside your oven where is all that stuff going to stick to you in those scratches and it actually gets harder and harder to clean over time um, so we just put this little scrubbing pad right over on top of this and you guys won't be able to see but afterwards you guys can take a look and i guess i'll wipe it with the towel um, so we just put this right on the oven door, and this is probably the most popular and favorite uses out of it. And we'll just do that half. So you guys, like two of you will be able to see how clean it is. Um, but afterwards you can take a look. And so what's cool is this will do the entire oven, including the racks. So all of your, um, I don't know, when we were a kid, I remember these getting soaked in the tub. Does anybody else have parents that did that? Yeah. Because they don't fit in the sink? <laughs> Good, I'm not the only one. I don't feel good as weird though. Um, but this is the same as like your grill. So this works good on the outside and inside. So if you have little spots on here, same thing. So you can see how all that stuff comes off instantly. So again, this is the oven's a popular thing because people usually, like when you're going to clean your oven, it's not like, oh, let's clean the oven quick. It's like, oh, yeah, let's clean the oven. <laughs> well, clear my schedule for the day. All right. 
Now around here, I don't know how you can, where you guys live or how the water is, but um, around Sioux Falls, and again up here, I know in some of the areas you get hard water storms on the, uh, you know, like all of your showers, faucets, stuff like this. So this is what we use for all that stuff. So you can actually use this. And this is going to be able to get any hard water spots in the grooves and the cracks, the stuff you usually have to use the toothbrush for, stuff like that. Not, not like probably the one you actually brush your teeth with, but so this is able to get into all the cracks and grooves and get all the stuff that's hard to reach inside all that. And again, this is one of our biggest selling points because you'll have that little white off color, you know, hard water spots and we can get all those grooves and that stuff sprays right out. And, you know, obviously here, I take care of a little bit better. And they're clean regularly. But other different stuff um, that our customers use this for is in the vehicle. So you use this um, to clean like the cup holders. You can scrub the cup holders, the rubber piece that goes in the doorway that can never be clean, no matter how you try. Um, the tracking that goes back and forth. Um, and actually, some of our customers, I think we were just talking about this, so even if you have like a shoe, um, we use it on running shoes, stuff like that. We use the same steam, just use it on the first setting. And you can see how clean the shoes will get. You know, and most bus owners worry about how many kids, you know, the shoes are constantly dirty, you know, that one clean spot. <laughs> All right, so that's the uh, plastic brush. Now, this is technically tile. Does anybody have uh, grout and stuff that you clean? Mm -hmm. So with this, we'll put the extensions on, and you can actually use these to clean the grout as well. Now, we have a, a few different brushes up here. Uh, there's a horsehair, a plastic, and then there's a, a copper and a steel brush. Now a steel brush, obviously you wouldn't be using for anything in the house because it would scratch, but this is what the farmers and a lot of the people outdoors use in their shops and stuff. Um, so when we do grout, we'll just kick this to the higher setting, and you can actually go, and you just push this in a groove just like brushing teeth, and this will go right in the groove, you know, this Um, it was crazy. <coughs> Give a clean part of the towel, <coughs> so you guys can actually see a little bit more. So we'll do a couple spots on here. Does anybody have pile and grout they've cleaned before? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I'll just wipe that part of the floor, and then you can see all the stuff that comes out of the grout. Because if you honestly think about it, that grout, it's kind of like a reservoir. <laughs> so basically as you mop and clean your floor, where is everything going? It's kind of like the filth traps. <laughs> everything goes right in that groove and we just fill them up basically. And so over time, most people, when you look at their house, or even you guys, if you look at your, your grout, you usually never know what the color was originally. Most people think it's a different color. And when you actually clean and steam the stuff off, it turns a whole different color. You can tell if you move an appliance or go into a hidden area, and then you'll see what your grout really was like. <laughs> so everybody can do that when they see tile, and you'll notice how different it really is. Now they do have a plunger tool, but I don't really uh, need to go into that one too much for you guys. Um, and then for the essential oils again, now we use this, because when you get to that 30 below weather that we uh, moved and lived in this area for, so that's why we're all here, right? <laughs> will actually do the same thing with the essential oil. So this works great as not just a humidifier, but um, you can use it for aromatherapy. Um, some people use it because uh, if they have kids that have respiratory problems or they do like steam baths. Um, I know my wife has uh, migraines, so she would have to get like the hot bucket of water type thing, put your head over it. So this is what we use instead now. This go right on the front, and then we kick this on. And if anybody's used essential oils before, you know the diffusers are not very powerful. They can't cover a whole room most of the time either. 
So we'll kick this on and put a fan in our living room, and within 10 or 15 minutes, you'll feel the moisture difference. It's, it's significant. And like, like we talked about last night, when it's 35 below, you can feel how dry it is. And wake up with bloody noses and stuff, you know. Um, if anybody's lived up here for a period of time, you've probably experienced that. Um, so we'll let this run for a while. Uh, we use it around our kids' rooms, and the bedrooms we'll use like eucalyptus or Vix. It's kind of the same thing. And we'll let this run so that it kind of helps open up the nostrils and you can breathe a little bit better as well. And again, we did this all without what? No chemicals. And that's kind of the cool part because once, once we show this, most people kind of see that, okay, what do I need to use chemicals for? Like it just doesn't make any sense when the warning labels are right there. Any questions on that? Man, I was trying to think of legit anything else. I just seemed like I went pretty quick. I have questions. Yeah. So do you use just faucet water? Like what Oh yes, yeah, sorry, I didn't. So I basically filled it up with two of these containers when I started. So out of all the stuff we've done and steamed, I've only used two of these the entire time that we've done <coughs> cleaning. And it has to be tap water, it can't be distilled water, it has to be tap water. So just regular tap water, you grab right out of the faucet and then you and then if you're purchasing it, the towels that you're using and the thing that you're putting the smelling stuff, the mm -hmm. yep. oil on, does that come with it? Correct. Yep. Yep. Well, we sell them, yeah, when we sell the machines, um, our customers get a five pack of towels, all the padding, all the tools, everything comes with the machine that we show. And the towels you just throw in your washing machine? Yeah. So the towels are a better microfiber, so you can't use fabric softener. Um, you wash them on hot, um, and then... Um, uh, Usually we wash them with, you know, jeans, um, or people use Norwex. Does anybody know what Norwex is? Mm -hmm. I think it's huge in Sioux Falls, like nowhere else, I swear. Um, but yeah, there's microfiber towels, and, and as long as you don't use fabric softener, and it's better to wash them without other cotton stuff. Like usually jeans are good because there's not anything that'll stick, because it'll stick to those towels, mm -hmm. those stuff, because they're super absorbent. Only be tap water. In fact, I think so, one of the other offices put, has a huge label they put on there that says tap water only. Because um, we sell an EV clean, it's a, it's a natural cleaner, um, it's a lanolin based condition type cleaner, and I think that's why they put the label because people want to put other stuff in there. But it's only only for tap water. Yes? A lot of machines that uh, calls for not using tap water because it turns uh, the line scale. Machine. Yeah, all of that stuff build up in there. Um, yeah, so with line scale, what they have is a key and there's a drain underneath, kind of like changing oil. So as you use it after a year, two years, three years, you can actually drain out the water and you can actually rinse and clean out the inside of the tank. The reason you have to use tap water is for it to get 350 degrees and for it to produce that high temperature and that steam, and for it that the thermostats to read the temperature in there, it has to have some of that sediment and stuff inside that water. If you put distilled water in there, it wouldn't even work because it can't read the temperature of the water. Does it ever mold or it? Uh, no, because it, the hot temperature inside there is what keeps it from that. Um, as well as, this is why any competing product, I guess you could say, um, let's just say if anybody had an empty pot bottle or a water bottle. Um, does anybody have a 20 ounce bottle that's empty? Check the recycling. I think mine are full. <laughs> I could. I could. No, I don't want to. I'm, 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 too, I'm too cheap to waste anything like this. It's okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could chuck the whole thing, but I don't feel like that's what I came here for. <laughs> so, so-called competing machines, because people ask us about these other cheap old Walmart ones, because some people still already have steamers, but what are they made out of? They're made out of plastic. Now this is stainless steel because it won't rust. Stainless steel won't rust and it's made to last forever. Um, but what happens is, if you have a machine 
like this that gets to a hot temperature. Even the, 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 the ones that you see in the stores are maybe 215 to 240 degrees. So it's steam, but it's still a lot of moisture because it's not hot enough. But if you were gonna use one of those machines, um, over time, if you're using hot steam, what's gonna happen to the plastic? And it's a sealed container in there, right? So what happens when you have steam that's involved with any type of plastic or cheaper material, over time it's going to break down and it's actually going to melt. That's why most people that have steamers, they bought at Walmart or Target or a cheaper brand, they've had them for two, three, four years, and they typically break down and they're just, they don't keep working. Um, and this is why, because every time it heats up and cools down, you're expanding and contracting that stuff. Which we know a little more about that because we're from the Midwest, right? <laughs> In Texas, I don't think they get that part. Because <laughs> it's always nice down there. For them, I guess. <laughs> well, speaking of that, 30 below window, is it okay to put that See, out? we just talked about that last night. We do not. <laughs> they didn't say anything, you know, that's something, because we're one of the first, I think we're the only office in the Midwest, aren't we? We're the only office up here, we're the first office up here to do it. And as we were showing machines, they never told us that. But we were like, wait a minute, this, this probably isn't a good thing. Um, and again, the owners, you know, they're not familiar with that weather. So yeah, when we're doing it, if it's below zero, we don't go near any windows or anything outside. We don't clean vehicle stuff. We just stay away from it. So, see it. Somebody you spray that steam out of the super bowl and see what it does? No. <laughs> I'm afraid it would go through and then freeze it and blow the machine. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched enough movies, you never know. <laughs> And then, uh, how, normally, how often would people have to go to packs of towels? So, the towels that I've been using today, like all these towels, I've been using for probably six to eight weeks, and I just wash them after I use them in every house. So, I just got myself 20 towels, and it's the same 20 towels I've used for the last, you know, like one and a half to two months. And so, it's up to the customer. You know, if you kind of look on here, you kind of see, for one and a half to two months of using these towels every two days and washing them probably two to three times a week, that's pretty good for how long they last. So five towels comes with it, you really shouldn't need any for quite a long time. <laughs> um, now, when I do like my oven at home, I'm not using our nice expensive quality towels to wipe all the junk out of the oven. I'm using like crappy towels when I'm detailing the vehicles. The only time you need to use a quality towel is when you're using it on one of the attachments. Um, or maybe when you're wiping any windows or surfaces because this will absorb more stuff. Otherwise, any of that major junk you're cleaning, use crappy old towels to wipe all that stuff. So these towels will last quite a long time. And the heat pads as well, because mine I've used a lot, you can wash these with the towels. So then that way, over time, they get dirty, dirty, you just wash them and they turn out clean. <coughs> so when you, you know, I mean, when you use this stuff over years, you know, to do your normal weekly cleaning, so just one time use of that, you've been went through all the towels and that one cleaning, trying to get all the products, up all layers of products off of there, and, once you, yeah, once you wash like them. a lot of work. I mean, uh, for the steamer? Well, for the first time, because you're trying to get all well, the layers off for it. Well, most of the time, the windows are the hardest to clean. Otherwise, people just do their normal clean. So the main difference with, the reason why we've sold a lot is because people see it's the stuff they already clean. So you already mop or use your Swiffers on the floors. You're already going to clean your ovens, your countertops, and everything else. So we're not telling people to go and clean every surface like I clean the window. That's to show people why we're using steam. Um, we just tell people, just clean when you're going to clean. Just do your normal clean. The difference is you're not adding more to the problem. You're, you're going to start catching up. Um, but there is a lot of people that are kind of like the clean freaks that once they see it, they're like, you know, I'm taking the weekend off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hazmat suit and then we're going to get... Um, but realistically, most people just buy it and then they just start doing what they've always done. They clean their oven after a while. Um, that's the first thing they clean and then they just start using, oh, I'll use it on my floor next weekend. So most people that we sell, we don't give them that urgency. It's more like, hey, just clean when you clean. Just start using this and then you're kind of already... The biggest key we always 
would like to see is people just kind of say, you know what, I'm just going to get rid of those and throw them. What about the book services, like the room tables? You know, and they, they got that finish on there. Yeah, so you can use uh, the towel on there, uh, the, the, the triangle brush. Uh, you just can't use too much heat, so you can't just put it on the surface and let it sit there because it will take the finish off. Um, now, when I do a lot of stuff like my vehicle or, or um, uh, chairs and stuff, um, I will actually just use the sprayer on like wood surfaces. So what I'll do is I'll kick on the steam, and then I'll just go like this. So if I really want to use the steam on it and it's a finished surface that's fragile, I'll use that. Because remember, I can hold my hand out here and it's not going to burn. So I can control how much heat by how far I have it. And I've actually done that to use to detail my whole car. That's all I used was this. Because I used, I just sprayed it and just kind of wiped across. And so I used one of these water to clean my entire outside of my car. Because I kept track. Rather than, I mean, we all know how many gallons and gallons of washing and rinsing. And, no, I didn't do it after I've been on dirt roads for like a week. Not, not that layer of dirt, just general. And I suppose grease and stuff like that is easy when it's heated. Yep, exactly. So that's why in Sioux Falls, one of our customers um, actually texts me. Because I give them all my card with my cell phone and tell them, text me pictures, let me know how it's going. And they were taking apart old farm equipment and they said the carburetors get this buildup on there and there's no replacement parts. So usually to get the grease off the carburetors, they have to use electrolysis and buckets to basically get that stuff to come off. And they would just use this on the high setting and make it go and put this right on there. And then that steam basically was getting all of that, all of that debris and all of that buildup on the carburetors off there. So then they just use this instead of having to use the, the other stuff. So it's cool the uses they do more than well, now, we think of. Now go ahead and read the warning labels on a can of degreaser carburetor cleaner. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I know. It's gonna be a little more than that. We do that with our, you know, the boats and the jet skis up, up, up at my parents' place. You know, we were always taking stuff apart and redoing stuff, and yeah, it's, you know, it's like gloves and masks and glasses. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty crazy, so. Um, the other unique use that they use, I know down south, is they use this to clean jewelry a lot. So they'll do home shows, and they'll actually do free jewelry clean because what do they use in the jewelry stores? Those little machines they put it in, it's just steam is all it is. And so you can't hold, you know, can't keep it on your finger. <laughs> so you just hold it with a towel and you can actually steam, steam the jewelry to clean it off as well. So it's cool because there's all your normal uses, but when we go to houses, it's fun because we literally just start thinking of stuff. The cars, you know, we've had husbands take them out to detail the motorcycles. Um, and bikes and boats and uh, we just have a lot of people that just start thinking of everything they use a chemical on they're like well let's see how the steamer works on it and that's what's cool about it it's not just a standard this 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 it's the longer you have it the more uses you kind of find for it as you go how does it work on a, a poster, a poster oh yeah so it's like those probably got a build up of dust on it those lampshades um this type of stuff i guess i've never cleaned this type of stuff you know, is it bad for me to say use the Kirby horsehair brush? <laughs> no. Because it's cloth. But typically when we do um, furniture, we just use this brush. And this is also how I, I'll do um, in the vehicles, the carpets after I vacuum, so I'll steam them. So you can use this on any fabrics. Uh, and then you can use it on leather. If you use it on the lowest setting and you just kind of go over it really lightly. Um, so this is how we clean furniture too. And it does work well. I mean, our Facebook page, we started posting before and after pictures so people can actually see how it works. Um, but it's like any other product. When we have a customer get them, we tell them, use the lower steam settings, get used to the machine. After you get used to it after a couple months, you know, you'll start kind of challenging what you can do with it too. Very unique. Any other questions? Any questions? Yeah. What's one of the more unique uses you've heard people really using them for? Um, I mean, the engine, the carburetor part was probably one of the biggest ones. Um, I did have a uh, guy that restores, um, kind of retired, he kind of restores like old, you know, benches and old stuff like that. And so what he would do is he'll use this and he takes the padding and the towel off. And this is basically this, just with a dozen 
hot steam sprayers. So if he wanted to take the finish off the wood or if he wanted to actually get some layers off, he would actually hook this right up to the machine. And this will... So now you have multiple sprayers and it's super hot and you put it on the high setting and he would go over old benches and stuff he wanted to refinish and this will actually, it's hot enough and enough pressure it can take the whole finish off. So instead of sanding and sanding, he was using this to take layers of the stuff. Did it, would it ruin his brush though? Uh, the, not really the brush. Okay. It, it, we'll get some of the color up on there and stuff, but then you can just use the steam and basically get the color back off there. <laughs> so that was a unique one that I hadn't heard of, you know, and this is why I like, it's so different. We, I really encourage customers to text me all the time, you know, because I want to know what they're using it for. Now it's winter, so we don't get as much info. Once summer comes in, it'll be a little bit a little bit more, there's a lot more to do outside. What's an average well, Marshall demo time? Well, Marshall will be outside what? seeing what happens. Yeah. Well, Marshall will be outside seeing what happens. He, he'll buy a machine. <laughs> <laughs> What's the average demo time? You get in their home, how long are you there? Typically for me, it's probably, um, I mean 45 minutes, I guess, kind of how long I was here. Um, but sometimes when we're in there, there's so much you can do with it. So like in here, I was kind of limited a little bit, but when we're in a house, it's kind of, we'll go in the bathroom. Um, so we'll use it, you can clean the toilet with it, because you can steam around the toilet, do the outside, and you don't have to touch it. And then you can flip it the other way and get underneath the lid of the toilets. So you can actually clean the whole bathroom without actually, again, the rubber gloves and the chemicals and wiping all that stuff down. Um, so I'd say 45 minutes, but if, if we talk quite a bit and we're with them, it can be an hour and a half, but the demo is probably 45 minutes. How do you hear these? We are Kirby customers. Obviously, I was a Kirby distributor for 15, 12 years, but I was in Kirby 15 years. So we call all of our Kirby customers and we give them a free bag and a free belt just to have us come out and clean and service and refresh their Kirby. So when I go to customers' houses, I put a free bag, a free belt, teach them how to use the Kirby, teach them how to adjust the brush rolls. We steam the brush roll and clean the brush roll because that's usually where the gunk builds up. Clean the front of the Kirby's, um, wipe it down, show them how to use anything, the shampoo system. So we refresh their whole demo of the Kirby and we use this to clean their Kirby. And then after that, we'll go through and start showing them the steam. So it's twofold, it's awesome, because we have a great customer base, but then you realize how many people don't utilize a lot of their Kirby's yet because they forgot or are afraid to ask or call. So, so many of our Kirby customers that even buy these, man, I'm so glad now I have the steamer and I can actually use my Kirby, you know, which, which is a big deal. And it's big for financing, because if they don't know how to use their Kirby's, then they don't want to pay for them and they have issues. And so, so I enjoyed that part. So I get to go and talk to all these Kirby customers that have products already. Oh yeah, I forgot, yeah. So the other way, when we, we weren't gonna cold call, we were just gonna do our Kirby leads. We decided to add kind of cold calling registration. So we actually do cleaning challenges. So we'll call up uh, cold calls or Reggie cards or whatever, and we just, it's pretty blunt. We just tell them, hey, we're from EV of South Dakota. We specialize in dry steam and screen technology, and we're looking for people to do a cleaning challenge. So we want you to pick the worst, dirtiest place in your house, something you can't get clean. Your oven, your stove, a grill, rims, you know, stain in the driveway on your carpet, furniture, you name it, whatever you can't get clean. Um, give us 15 to 30 minutes, we'll come out there and clean it for you for free. Um, and then we give them a little gift card for restaurants.com. And then we say, hey, we're just looking for some referrals for our new business in town. So when we go there, people are picking like, oh, I want to see my oven get clean. Or their grout is cute. It's a great way to do it, and I'm sure we'll adjust as time goes on, but that's been really good for us. Because usually everybody has like the spot in their house, <laughs> like something that's been bugging them forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have more people that rearrange their living room according to a stain, and that's kind of sad. It's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, the, the rug, or the, they put the chair over it, like, oh, the, the chair moved over two feet because their husband spilled coffee, and they couldn't get it out or whatever. There's not that grease that can ran between the stove and the, and the counter and all that stuff that you um, It will get all that stuff off. That. You'd probably you'd have to move the, the right, oven you pull out. Pull that stove out and you got all that stuff that. Yeah, I just up. used this triangle brush with the towel on. 
So, because even when we do like the hoods above it and stuff, and around the upsides of the cabinets, we just put that on there and then we steam it, and then you'll see all that grease on the towel. So you have to use the towel when you do it with like grease. Or... Yep. Yep. Well, the towel is just easy because it's kind of wiping for you as you're doing it. Oh. Um, kind of for instance, in Sioux Falls, my brother owns a bed store, and they have the tables they manufacture the beds on, and they use a glue. Um, and that layer of glue builds up on the, the surface, so then as they try to slide the beds down the tables, it sticks to the tables over time. Um, so they got one of the machines, and they used the triangle brush, and they basically just steamed, and all that glue came off the table. It was a thick layer of glue. I will admit it ruined their towels, <laughs> because they basically superheated the glue out of the towels, and then the washer can't get the glue out of the towels. So I made them just buy more towels. How much are the towels? You know, every office is different. We sell them for like 79 bucks for a five pack. So, which might sound expensive, but Norwex is a microfiber towel they sell, and they're more expensive. And they don't even aren't even working with the machines. I, I could I couldn't even get into Norwex. It's a whole different spiel. <laughs> we had to research it as we found all of our customers. Awkward silence for a few minutes. Yeah, I've thought about doing a, uh, you know, adding on to the business by um, delivering towels and picking them up like every three months. And, and, and there's companies around Sioux Falls that do that. We don't. I mean, just like we could have started a grout cleaning business to clean grout because it's so expensive. There's a lot of things, but um, I just wanted to kind of stick to one thing. You know, it's it's. Uh, even with curbing, so I always found if you just kind of stick to the one thing and kind of get that growing. And I just enjoy the customer part. Uh, and we teach our customers how to do stuff like that. So we pitch more opportunities to customers. Like if we have cleaning ladies, we teach them how to clean grout and we train them well. And we tell them like, hey, this is a great opportunity. Uh, one of my customers re is, spends half the year in Arizona. And so when I was at her house, we cleaned her tile. And she's like, man, in Arizona, we were, I was just with a group. We were all eating at a restaurant with a bunch of other retired gals. And they all talked about how expensive it was, like 800 bucks for them to clean the grout in their kitchen. So she bought one, and she was bringing it to Arizona with her. She's a retired gal. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to go clean their grout for 400 bucks <laughs> <laughs> while I'm in Arizona. She literally was putting it in her vehicle to bring down there because she figured, hey, why not make the extra money? So we teach our customers to do stuff like that so that they can go and make their extra money on it, you know, so. But restaurant business, um, some of the schools, teachers, uh, food trucks, those are a lot of our customers that, in the summers, that use them. So it works great in the restaurant business. Good as I guess we can set up. All right, anyone have any final questions for Matt? There, is there a possibility of using it as a dry cleaner? I do have some customers that will use it for steam to, for clothes, but I don't know if it would probably clean them. But I've had customers that, oh, that's a lot. Like the sprinkle, they would. Yeah, so I've got customers that will use this instead of a clothes steamer. And they'll use it to kind of steam up the clothes. Mm -hmm. and that, so. What was that? Make your clothes smell like clothes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Blend it fresh. <laughs> How long do you think they heat up? Uh, about five minutes, give or take. I see you hold the towel on this. I don't know if it's good for doing clothes, but this is like the skin out a little more. Yeah, when I first, if you let it sit for a while, we'll spit out a little bit of water, but as you let it run, it doesn't. It's just because the, the hose cools down, so as it shoots through, there's still extra water. And I always hold the towel when I'm using it because that hot steam's coming out, so it kind of is a, a barrier. Thanks again.